Welcome to our lecture online. No test would be complete without a leaning ladder, a ladder leaning against a wall and being about ready to slip. Well, here's such a problem on the JE advanced test, so kind of wondering how hard it's going to be. It says here that in the figure, there it is, a ladder of mass M is shown leaning against a wall. It is in static equilibrium making an angle theta with the horizontal floor. The coefficient of friction between the wall and the ladder is mu sub 1, and that between the floor and the ladder is mu sub 2. The normal reaction of the, of, of the wall on the ladder is n1, and that of the floor is n2. If the ladder is about to slip, then, and we have four possible combination answers. For A, mu sub 1 is 0, and mu sub 2 is not 0, and we need to show that n2, the tangent of theta, equals mg over 2 under those conditions. We have a condition where mu sub 1 is not 0, but u sub 2 is 0, and we have n1 tangent theta equals mg over 2. Then we have neither one of the coefficient of friction are 0, and n2 is mg over 1 plus mu1 times mu2, and then this one is 0, mu1 is 0, but u, mu2 is not 0, and then we have that condition. So, which of those four are correct? It could be 1, 2, 3, or all four. Well, let's take a look and see. When I take a closer look at what I see here and here, I notice there is one where mu sub 2 is equal to 0, and the others are not equal to 0. Now remember, if we draw the normal forces, here we can see that's the normal force N2, and here this is the normal force N1. Now, if there is friction between the floor and the ladder, then we're going to have a force in this direction. And so this force is going to be N2 mu sub 2. I don't know if you can see that because this pen is dying. Maybe I can find an, another one that writes a little clearer. Let's take a look here. Let's see if this one works better. So we have N2 mu2, a force in this direction, if there is friction, that is if mu2 is not equal to zero. And then here we have a force in this direction. This would be N1 mu1, if, again, mu1 is not equal to zero. But if I take a look at this one, that's the one over here. If there's no force here, keeping the ladder from slipping, if there's no friction, there's a case, mu2 equals zero, then notice there's a force n1 here because the ladder is leaning against the wall, which is not counterbalanced by any force over here, which means the ladder is going to slip at any angle theta other than the angle theta being, being 90 degrees, and so therefore B is not a possible answer. Right away we can eliminate it because you have to have friction down here to keep the ladder from slipping. All right, so that at least eliminates one of the four answers. Now, how do we handle the other answers? Well, what we're going to do here is realize that here we have an N1 in the equation, and there we have an N2 in the equation under the circumstance where mu sub 1 is equal to 0. So now I'm looking at these two right here, where mu sub 1 is equal to 0, which means that there is no vertical force here due to friction. There's only a normal force of the wall pushing back against the ladder. In either case, you can see that mu sub 2 is not equal to 0, so there is indeed friction right there. So, in the case of N1, which is this force right here, I can eliminate N2 and this force by doing the torque about point A. So let's call this point A, and let's call this point B, and of course at the middle of the ladder, because the center mass of the ladder, that's where the weight will be acting, we have an mg pulling that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say the sum of all the torques about point A, because I want to eliminate N2, so I only have N1 here, that is going to be equal to zero, which is equal to, well, how many forces are left? So we have the mg pulling down, which gives us a clockwise torque, which is a negative torque, so it's negative mg times the moment arm, which is the perpendicular distance from the line of action to the point of rotation, which is half this distance, so it would be one half the length of the ladder times the cosine of theta, so it would be uh, the length of the ladder divided by two 
times the cosine of theta. So that's the torque caused by the weight of the ladder. And now we have the torque pushing back this way, so that would be plus N1. And then the distance here, that would be the length of the ladder, times the sine of theta. So L times the sine of theta. And that added together adds up to zero. Now, notice that the L will cancel. And we could solve this for N1. So we have N1 is equal to, um, that would be, if we bring it to the other side, it would be positive. So it would be mg over 2 times the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. Then I look up here, but I see the tangent of theta on the same side of N1. So this is the cotangent of theta. If I bring it over here, it becomes the tangent of theta. So N1 times the tangent of theta is equal to mg over 2. And notice that that is the same as this. And so I can say that D is one of the correct answers. So now I need to do the same thing, but I'm going to do the torque about point B to eliminate N1 and end up with N2. So here I can say that the sum of the torques about B must equal zero. And that equals, notice that mg will give us a counterclockwise torque, so that's a positive torque. So that would be mg times this distance, which is the same as this distance, so it's L over 2 times the cosine of theta. Okay, now I have N2, which is pushing in this direction, that's a counterclockwise torque, so that would be a um, minus N2 times this distance, because it's the distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of force. That would be L times the cosine of theta. And I'm running out of room here, so let me set this back up, moving a little bit further to the left. Just trying to save some space. So again, we're going to take the sum of all the torques about point B, which is equal to zero, so which is equal to um, mg. L over 2 times the cosine of theta, then minus N2L times the cosine of theta, and then finally we have this one right here, which is a positive torque, so that would be equal to plus N2 times mu2 times uh, the L over 2, no, L over, no, it's complete L, not L over 2, but L times the sine of theta. Okay, so if I solve that for N2, first of all, all the L's cancel out. And if I solve that for N2, I can bring it over this side. So I have an N2 times, I have a cosine of theta minus mu2 sine of theta. And then that would equal, because I'm, I uh, moved it to this side, that would equal mg cosine of theta. And notice I really don't have to go further than that because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for n2 under the circumstance where mu sub 1 is 0 and mu sub 2 is not 0 and I'm not ending up with anything that looks anywhere close to this so I'm going to just say that a is not a possible answer. We could probably just already stop before we get to the end and say there's no way that n2 will equal this right here. So now we have one answer left, C. That's the circumstance where neither one of the two is equal to zero. In other words, neither one of the friction forces is equal to zero, which means that in that case, all the vertical forces must add up to zero and all the horizontal forces must add up to zero. So let's try that. So now we're going to try for answer C. And first we're going to do the, um, the horizontal forces. And so we can see that N1, pushing in one direction, must equal in magnitude N2 times mu sub 2. And we can look at the vertical forces in the vertical direction, and we can see that uh, N1 mu 1 pushing up, and N2 pushing up must equal the mg pushing down. Okay. So notice that I end up with an N2 in answer 2, so I have to eliminate N2. And, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. That means I can replace N1 by this. 
So because I want to eliminate N1 to end up with an N2. So I'm going to substitute this into here. That gives me N2 mu1 mu2 plus N2 equals mg. Factor out an N2, I get N2 is equal to N2 times mu1 mu2 plus 1 is equal to mg. And then dividing both sides by then and rearranging the terms, I get N2 is equal to mg divided by 1 plus mu1 times mu2. And notice, because I noticed that already, if I look over here, I have an mg over 1 plus mu1 mu2 being equal to N2, which is correct. So this is also a correct answer. So C and D are both correct. A and B are not correct. And that is how you find the two of the four answers in this case. Can this be done in three minutes or less? I would be hard pressed to do that in three minutes or less. As you can tell, how long did I take on this one? 11 minutes. <laughs> 11 minutes. So of course I do do a lot of talking and uh, that has to be accounted for. But doing this in three minutes would be uh, a tough, a tough assignment. But anyway, this is how it's done.